I was a medical student in New York City in, started in 2005. And in 2006, I'm not clear on the exact time, had a profound psychotic break. Didn't know that it happened to me. I was too psychotic. I had childhood trauma. I had a lot of childhood trauma. Uh, and med school was stressful. And the people I was closest to were dying. You know, my grandmother, who was like my purest love, unconditional relationship, I and mean, my parents were lovely people, but grandma was like, huh. She was dying. Um, and then I think I really actually broke after she died. I think I, I couldn't process the grief. And my life fell to shreds. You know, I went from being functional, obviously, and I'm a med student, crashed into debt, very, very painful, you know, confused time in life. I mean, it's a pretty horrible place to live. Um, I was 26, maybe. And started to claw my way out of it, probably around 2012, reading various spiritual texts and about energy. And it's weird, because I was a complete atheist. You know, I believed in nothing. Um, science guy. And I was desperate enough to try anything. And I started to put the pieces of some semblance of a self back together, but I had no idea what was wrong with me. But I was very, very sick. I mean, like, extremely self-destructive. And in 2014, I had, I guess you could call it a mystical experience, bizarre for me, because again, I come from a science world, where I felt surrounded by just these very loving angelic beings for several hours. And I went in the room next door and started sobbing, and I said out loud, oh my God, I've had a psychotic break. Therapy, deeper movement into these spiritual healings, I, I, I got back to life. I got back to the place where I could function. I didn't really tell many people this had happened to me because now I knew, I didn't want people to know. Slowly got back in school for a little while, started working again, slowly. And it got better and better. And it got to the point where if you didn't dig too deep, I looked pretty normal. Um, but I would fight my mind all the time. Every minute of every day, that part wanted to take over. So walking meditation here at the Joe Dispenza retreat, <laughs> filling my body up with energy the way you're shown to, which is wonderfully scientific. It works in my science brain. I'm using breath and motion. And I remember Dr. Joe saying that the suprachiasmatic nucleus, it's an organ in the brain that processes light and makes serotonin, but he mispronounced it. He said, super charismatic nucleus. <laughs> and I thought in the moment he said that, that's not random. I should listen to that. I was walking and I sort of just listened to my own brain and it said, you know, this nucleus makes serotonin in response to visible light. But ecstasy, MDMA, the drug, which I've never done, also works through a serotonin axis. Maybe if you stimulate this with pure love, it will make ecstasy. So as an experiment, I saw the light as love. I felt it go in here, touch that region of the brain, and something popped inside of my mind, and I felt ecstasy. Wandered around the beach, feeling literal ecstasy, heart opening. If the drug affects us, there's a receptor, and there's an endogenous analog, right? So I knew enough, I was like, okay, something in me can produce this. I don't know exactly, is it endorphins, is it enkephalin, is it pure serotonin regulation? I don't know exactly what blend of neurochemistry gives rise to MDMA's drug effects, but I know it must have endogenous analogs, and I, I proved that to myself. <laughs> and then I did it again, and it was like in, I, insane. There's a piece to the story I haven't told yet. My, my best friend in the world, who passed away a few years ago, was possibly the smartest human I've ever met on planet Earth. Uh, he was at Harvard doing his PhD and had a total schizophrenic break. And again, this is weird for me, but I literally felt him come to me. And I knew that I had taken on somehow what had happened to him. I wanted to save him and I felt terrible that I'd maybe abandoned him as a friend. I felt him love me. I felt him forgive me. I felt something like a massive shadow rip out of my body. I think I was spasming on the sand at this point. And I put myself, and, and, and I felt him touch my shoulder. 
and I just knew he was okay. And we always talked about what we would do to change the world together. And he said, you carry the torch now. So I get up and I'm feeling really good. <laughs> and I've learned enough from Joe to know there's always something new that's awesome that's possible. So I sort of was like, you know, I just want something awesome to happen right now. And I said that in my heart. This guy walks up to me with a blondish brown beard and glasses and bushy brown hair, which is exactly how Brian looked, and says, hi, I'm Brian. And I just lose it. And I'm like, and I tell him the story and I get to the part where he was, he was at Harvard and had a schizophrenia. He was like, oh, I went to Harvard. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. So a couple hours later, I'm sitting in a chair and I start walking. And I say to myself, something's, something's weird. What the hell is going on? Something's wrong. And I, I go to wrestle my mind into shape and I realize there's nothing to wrestle. For the first time in 15 years, the part of my mind that broke, shattered me, destroyed my life, physical health shattered, has also healed. It's just quiet. Quiet today and it feels normal. It feels like no big deal. It's it's like a movie I watched, not a life I lived. So that's pretty wow. And I wanted to share that one because like, my gosh, <laughs> that, that is possible. <laughs>